Romeo and Juliet, plot summary, act one. Romeo and Juliet opens with a prologue. A chorus or cast of characters speak in sonnet form, describing the ancient grudge between two noble families of Verona, the Capulets and the Montagues. They then reveal that two star-crossed lovers will appear whose ill-fated love will end with their tragic deaths. This will, in turn, heal the rift between the two families. Next, the action moves to the streets of Verona, where two Capulet servants, Samson and Gregory, decide to provoke two approaching Montague men with an obscene gesture. This soon escalates into a brawl, which draws in the peacemaking Montague, Benvolio. He urges for calm with, put up your swords. The hot-headed Capulet, Tybalt, then joins in, taunting Benvolio before Lords Montague and Capulet enter the struggle, with their wives attempting to hold them back. Eventually, Prince Aeschylus arrives to break up the fray and furiously berates both sides that if they disturb the streets of Verona again, their lives will be at stake. The prince exits and Benvolio goes in search of Romeo, who expressively reveals to him he is in love with a beautiful woman, later identified as Capulet's niece, Rosaline, who will not return Romeo's affection. Benvolio advises Romeo to examine other beauties, rather than obsess over Rosaline, but Romeo assures him he will not forget her. Next, Lord Capulet meets with a wealthy nobleman, County Paris, who desires to wed Capulet's only daughter, Juliet. Capulet is initially sceptical, stating that Juliet is too young to be married, but then reminds Paris he is hosting a ball at his mansion, and if Paris can woo her and get her heart, he may be open to the marriage. Capulet dispatches his servant, Peter, with invitations. Soon, Peter approaches Romeo and Benvolio for assistance reading the note. Romeo notices Rosaline's name on the list, and the pair decide to attend the ball in disguise. Meanwhile, at the Capulet mansion, Juliet is getting ready for the ball with her nurse when Lady Capulet enters to discuss the proposition of her engagement to Paris. Juliet tells her mother that marriage is an honour that I dream not of but politely agrees to consider Paris as a suitor anyway. That evening, Romeo gathers with other partygoers, including Benvolio and close friend Mercutio. Romeo reveals he is anxious about the feast because of a dream he has had. At this, Mercutio mocks him and makes a long and increasingly manic speech about Queen Mab of the fairies, who visits people's dreams. Romeo eventually interjects, and the group set off for the feast. Romeo arrives at the ball with his friends and quickly spots Juliet dancing. He is immediately transfixed by her, stating, I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. Tybalt spots Romeo and is enraged that a Montague is in their household. However, Capulet restrains him, urging Tybalt to leave Romeo alone. Romeo approaches Juliet and asks her permission to kiss her. Juliet initially refuses, but succumbs to Romeo's romantic arguments. After sharing a kiss, they part. The nurse then reveals to Romeo that Juliet is a Capulet, before delivering the same news to Juliet. They are both devastated, with Juliet in particular lamenting, Prodigious birth of love it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. Act 2. The chorus deliver another sonnet, explaining how Romeo's affection for Rosaline has now faded, and predicting complications as a result of his new love for Juliet. After leaving the Capulet Ball, Romeo decides to sneak back in to see Juliet, climbing over the orchard wall. Juliet appears in the window, unaware of Romeo's presence, and questions why Romeo has to be a Montague. Romeo soon reveals himself, claiming, if she wishes, he will give up his name for her. A loving debate follows, where Juliet questions if Romeo's feelings are truly reliable. Undeterred, Romeo proposes they marry, and Juliet agrees. Romeo exits, promising to send word to her in the morning. The next day, Romeo visits a priest named Friar Lawrence to arrange the secret marriage. The friar, knowing of Romeo's previous infatuation with Rosaline, is sceptical, but then reasons that a marriage between a Capulet and Montague could help to heal the grudge between the households, so he agrees. Later, Romeo meets with Mercutio and Benvolio, and they discuss how Tybalt, 
still furious at Romeo's presence at the ball, is itching for a duel. The nurse then enters and Romeo gives her a message for Juliet, saying to meet him at the friar's chapel in the afternoon so they can marry. The nurse delivers the message to Juliet, who leaves to meet Romeo. Juliet arrives at the chapel, where the friar has just cautioned Romeo to love moderately, if he wishes their love to truly last. Romeo and Juliet embrace and exit to be married by the friar. Act 3 Back in the streets of Verona, Benvolio and Mercutio are accosted by a furious Tybalt, who is looking for Romeo. Romeo then enters and urges Tybalt that he means him no offence. Tybalt is unmoved by Romeo's words, and Mercutio chastises Romeo for his apparent weakness. Mercutio and Tybalt begin to duel. The fight turns serious, and Romeo gets in the way, resulting in Mercutio being stabbed. Mercutio exclaims, A plague of both your houses, cursing them all before he dies. Romeo is enraged, then pursues Tybalt and kills him. He then flees before the prince arrives, proclaiming that Romeo is exiled for Verona for his crime. Back at the Capulet mansion, Juliet eagerly anticipates Romeo's return. The nurse then arrives delivering news of Tybalt's death. Juliet initially curses Romeo's name in frustration with, O serpent heart, hid with a flowering face. But she soon reasons that she still loves Romeo in spite of this terrible incident. The nurse then agrees to bring Romeo to her. Hiding at the friar's cell in a desperate state, Romeo claims there is no world without Verona walls. The nurse arrives, assuring Romeo Juliet still loves him, and the friar urges Romeo to go to Juliet. Following this, Lord Capulet meets with Paris at the mansion, where Capulet hastily decides to arrange the marriage between Juliet and Paris for the following Thursday. Lady Capulet is told to deliver the news to Juliet. Just before dawn, Romeo and Juliet stand on the balcony, having spent the night together. Juliet playfully urges Romeo to stay, arguing that it is not really morning, before abruptly changing her mind to urge him fearfully, Oh now, be gone, more light and light it grows. Romeo departs as Lady Capulet enters, delivering the news of the wedding. Juliet is indignant and assures her mother that she will not marry Paris, saying, It shall be Romeo, whom you know I hate, rather than Paris. Capulet then enters, and is enraged by Juliet's refusal to obey him. He threatens to disown her unless she marries Paris. After Capulet exits, the nurse urges Juliet to agree, but Juliet makes an excuse to attend confession at Friar Lawrence's, so she can make a plan. Act 4 Juliet arrives at the Friar's, where he is meeting with Paris. Paris greets Juliet, talking eagerly of Juliet as my lady and my wife, before the friar ushers him away. Alone with the friar, Juliet becomes distraught and threatens to take her own life if she cannot be with Romeo. Seeing Juliet's desperation, the friar proposes a plan, telling Juliet to consent to the wedding, but on the night before to drink a potion, which will make her appear dead. The friar will send a letter to Romeo, who will collect Juliet from the Capulet tomb the next day. Juliet hastily agrees to the plan, taking the potion from the friar. Returning to the Capulet house, Juliet cunningly deceives her parents, claiming to repent of her sinful refusal to follow their wishes. Capulet is delighted and decides to move the date for the wedding to the next day. Left alone, Juliet decides to take the potion a night early due to the change of plans, but before doing so, she frets about the possibility of the plan failing. She eventually takes the potion and passes out in her room as if dead. As the household prepares for the wedding, the nurse enters Juliet's chamber and discovers her body. Soon after, Lord and Lady Capulet enter and despair at the sight of Juliet. They are followed by Paris and finally the friar, who takes charge, instructing that the body be taken to the church and convinces the others to begin preparations for the funeral. Act 5 Romeo, exiled in Mantua, receives news from Balthazar that Juliet is dead. Devastated, he exclaims, I defy you, stars, and asks Balthazar if he has not received letters from the friar. Balthazar says he has not. Romeo decides to immediately return to Verona, but first visits an apothecary, where he buys a vial of poison. 
Meanwhile, Friar Lawrence is visited by Friar John, who informs him that he was unable to deliver the letter informing Romeo of the plan due to an outbreak of disease in Verona. The friar is dismayed and sets off for the Capulet tomb to try to intercept Romeo. At the graveyard, Paris arrives to visit Juliet, but Romeo enters and begins to wrench open the door to Juliet's tomb. Paris attempts to intercede and arrest Romeo and the pair fight. Romeo slays Paris, but in mercy carries his body to rest in the tomb as Paris requests. Upon seeing Juliet's body, Romeo is overcome with love and grief and says he intends to rest in eternity with her. Romeo kisses Juliet, then drinks the poison and dies at her side. The friar then enters as Juliet begins to stir. Seeing Romeo's body, he urges her, Lady, come from that nest of death. But Juliet refuses to leave and the friar exits. Seeing the empty vial of poison next to Romeo, Juliet kisses him, hoping to ingest some of the liquid. Then hearing sounds from the watchman outside the tomb, Juliet picks up Romeo's dagger and saying, Oh, happy dagger, this is thy sheath. There rust and let me die. She stabs herself and dies upon Romeo's body. The tomb is soon filled with the watchman, Prince Aeschylus, Friar Lawrence and Lord and Lady Capulet. The two parents wail over Juliet's death as Lord Montague enters with the news that Lady Montague has passed away in despair over Romeo's banishment. Next, the friar offers an explanation for what has happened. The prince then scolds both Montague and Capulet, blaming the feud for the deaths. All are punished. Montague and Capulet join hands and agree to end the feud. Each decide to raise golden statues of the other's child in honour of their love. The play ends with the prince's poetic words. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo.